will first start with a short introduction to normal handcuffs. I mean, there are thousands of videos on YouTube how to open standard handcuffs, <laughs> and so I don't uh, go into much, uh, too much detail there. But it's good to know the mechanism because in the high security ones, it's basically the same principle with everything. So we go to the normal handcuffs, show the inside, then move on to the advanced models and show the weaknesses. Because the slot has been reduced to half an hour, we will do all the picking stuff and hands-on stuff afterwards on the second level in the lock picking area. So if you want to get your hands into or onto a few of the cuffs and try the picking, feel free to come with me afterwards down to the area where we can do the hands-on stuff. Okay. Uh, standard handcuffs today are basically all the same. So there are different brands available, but they differ only in small details. This hasn't uh, always been so. Uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, there have been tons of different models of handcuffs with completely different mechanisms, because everybody invented something, and they were even more difficult to pick than what's standard today. Standard today in the U.S. is mainly five brands. You see them here. One has gone bankrupt, so it's four. And about every police officer in the United States has one of these or a cheap Asian copy of it. The cheap Asian copies basically work the same, they're just easier to pick. <laughs> okay, here we, we see a few of them. It's Peerless, Miss and Wesson, Hyatt, American Handcuff. I've shown the ASP in full detail, because what's different on them, the relatively new brand, is that you have keyholes on both sides, which of course is to our advantage. It was intended to be an advantage to the officers, so they don't have to look where the, where the key goes by, when handcuffing someone. But of course, it's only good if you don't. So they can't handcuff you in a way that the keyhole is on the wrong side. So this is a yellow one down there. They come in colors. But the other ones you see, I don't know if, it's, if it can be seen, but the only main difference is the position of the keyhole. So some have the keyhole in the middle, some have the keyhole on the side. But, but that's mainly the, the difference. These are not handcuffs. <laughs> These are toys, so I won't talk about them. If you want to open them, just tear them apart or stick a screwdriver in them or whatever, but you won't uh, get them in law enforcement. <laughs> okay. I don't know how, how many of you have already watched these YouTube videos or know how this is working. Can you... Hands up for those who already know the inside of a normal handcuff. Okay, for all the others, remember those faces for the next Spot the Fat contest. <laughs> okay, we have basically a swing through bow which goes around. It can move through, so all the way. And uh, you see the, the black parts I painted in there. That's basically the mechanism. You have that spring-loaded bar, which holds the teeth of the bow. So it goes step by step, but it can move freely as long as you don't lock it. The second thing on the, on the downside here is the double lock bar. You have to move it to the right in this picture, and then this post holds the ratchet. So even though it's spring-loaded, it can't move anymore. You do this on a normal handcuff by pushing either a button on the side or by sliding uh, something in a window with the other end of the key. I'll show the standard key. This works great. Video, can anybody? <laughs> Can this be fixed? <laughs> hmm? Oh, obviously it can't, okay. <laughs> but you can imagine that there's a small post on the top of the key and that is usually used to activate the double lock. Okay. 
Here's another picture. It's actually from the prospect which, which comes with the cuff. So if you buy one of the ASP cuffs, you get this nice inside picture with it. This is really nice to us, I think. You basically can see the same parts as in the previous picture. There's the yellow thing is the, the double lock bar. And the other thing is a spring-loaded spring -loaded ratchet. And you see the keyholes on both sides. So, everybody who is into lock picking knows if there is a spring-loaded mechanism, then it can be shimmed because there's no, nothing preventing the bow from going down, uh, the ratchet from going down except the spring. So if you have a non-double-locked cuff, what you can do is simply take a thin piece of metal, just like a padlock shim or something like that, and put it in the same direction as the bow goes, uh, possibly... No, we don't have that. I don't know if anybody can see it. But the basic idea is to put in the slider and then it goes out. <laughs> because uh, the metal goes over the teeth and so it doesn't, doesn't stop anymore. But as I said, of course it's only possible if nobody engaged the double lock. So the next question is, how do we get the double lock out? Okay, police officers use the key. <laughs> you usually have to turn it in the opposite direction as for opening. Um, it's, it's possibly good to know in which direction you actually open the handcuff because there's different positions of the lock and everything. A basic rule is always turn it so it goes in the same direction as the bow moves. So on this cuff, if the bow moves in here, we would try to have the key also move up there, no matter where the, where the lock is or where, how it's oriented. For undoing the double lock, we have to move in the other direction. So we take some piece of, of pick like the normal hook, so everybody has in his lock picking set, and do the same as the key would do. So we insert it in the lock, move it in the opposite direction as for opening, and the double lock will come out. It's easier on some models like Peerless or ASP, it's a bit more difficult on this uh, Miss and Wesson ones because they have tighter, tighter tolerances. But it basically should work on, on every standard cuff. You have to try it a bit. As said later in second level, you can have your own try. After we open the double lock, we can of course do the same with the standard lock. So we can move the, the pick in the same direction as the key would go, would go for opening but we also can shim the cuff. So the usual easiest way is open the cuff, that cuff. You have to try it a bit. As said later in second level, you can have your own try. After we open the double lock, we can of course do the same with the standard lock. So we can move the, the pick in the same direction as the key would go, would go for opening, but we also can shim the cuff. So the usual easiest way is open the cuff with the open the double lock with the pick and then shim the cuff uh, with the shim if you have it. If you just have one pick, you have of course to do both things. So, what's the alternative? <laughs> just use the key. Because carrying around a lock pick usually is more difficult than carrying around a key. So if you have a handcuff key in your pocket or possibly in your pocket by hidden somewhere in your clothes and you get arrested illegally. I don't expect any real criminals are in the room. It's much easier to get out your key than to get out a lock pick and pick the cuff. So it's basically relatively pointless to pick standard cuffs. This is a comparison chart showing some of the keys and some of some handcuff brands. There also are some German ones in there because I didn't redo it. As you can see, the ASP key, the current shape of ASP key, green means it opens. Yeah basically opens all the cuffs we had in our test. Other keys don't do this. So for example, the Hyatt key, which is a bit larger, will not open all cuffs. So try to get a hold of a peerless key or of an ASP key. The Smith & Wesson key also isn't bad for the US. And you will basically be able to open all standard handcuffs the police might use on you. So obviously, there's some need for higher security. 
which actually is good because it makes things more interesting for us. So what, what have they done to, to increase the security of standard handcuffs? One very simple mechanism which possibly many of you have already seen is to change from a chain hand let's no he should do change from a chain handcuff to a hinged one. That's something like that. If this is applied in a way that the holes are facing away from your hand like this, it is very difficult to pick it. So you don't need any high security cylinder or anything, it's just difficult. If you have the key so and you have good fingers, it's still possible to reach around. So you take the key and put it on the other side and you can escape. What they also have done, especially Hyatt and a few others, is instead of having one of these ratchets, the spring-loaded ones, make thinner pieces of it and put them next to each other. So when you try to undo this with your lock-picking pick, with a hook or something, you have a good, good chance to only get one of the ratchets and the other one stays up so the handcuff won't open. This is not very relevant to us because we shim the handcuff and shimming will always get all of them. So, yeah, don't worry. So, what did they do to prevent, prevent everybody from carrying around a handcuff key? They changed uh, the shape of the key and the shape of the keyhole, so there are handcuff models around which just use a different key. Still the same for all the handcuffs of this brand, but it's different from the standard key. If we get, get back video. <laughs> okay, yeah, don't worry. So, um, if you really think you might be arrested in an area where they use these other key, uh, handcuffs, you should inform yourself which keys they use there, or if you have a friend who might handcuff you, <laughs> you should know which models he has, and you can basically also get a hold of the key. So, for real high security, they actually added real high security cylinders to the handcuffs. So, if you know from lockpicking, pin tumbler cylinders, they actually are handcuffs with pin tumbler cylinders, which have a different keying on each handcuff. So there's one key matching one handcuff, and if you buy another one, you don't have a matching key. That, of course, is bad for escaping. So here's the first one with a, a pin tumbler cylinder. You see it's a tubular lock, like many know from bicycles or so, but it only has four pins and the four pins only have two depths, so there's just 16 different keys. That's much less than for a usual bicycle lock. And from these 16 possible keys, they only used a few. So mainly all of these handcuffs out there have the same key, it's the N key, the normal one, and to get the problem away that everybody can buy it, they made a restricted key, which is a different, different keying of the tubular key, which only was issued to some agencies or whatever. But that's not a real problem, because of course there are high-tech tools around there to circumvent tubular cylinders. Who of you knows which high-tech tools are available to open tubular cylinders? This one. Oh, you ruined it. <laughs> we can't show the high-tech tool because it's top secret. Ah, here's a high-tech tool. <laughs> so as with, with some well-known bicycle locks, in these handcuffs you guys could insert the top of the pen cap, jiggle it around, and then it will basically impression the lock. So that's not a very good thing, and they stopped using these cuffs. I'm not sure if they stopped using it because of this. Others say because they were too heavy, because they even were bad to operate when you had the key, because you had to insert it right from the front. So I don't think those are really used anymore, but they may be around. They were replaced by this model, which went back to a standard mechanism, so it's back to the normal lock with the, with the ratchet that you have to push down. But they changed the key a bit. I'm not sure if you can see it back there. But the key has a shape like this. 
so there's a hook going up and on the lock they added something which makes it higher and more tight so a normal key won't fit and picking is a bit more difficult because you have to get into the tighter keyway but it's again the same key for all handcuffs and you can buy these so to get a hold of one of these keys is no problem at all so we get to something more secure <laughs> this is an Australian product it was used by the US Marshal Service, I think. I'm not sure if they use it anymore. But they might be around because some were bought and you see them on eBay from time to time, so they obviously have been used. It has a pin tumbler lock with pins on both sides. So there's normal pins from the bottom and there's pins from, up, uh, from above. Uh, but again, and I don't know why that is, it's the same key for all. So if you have one key, it will open all of these cuffs since the 1950s. <laughs> it's also not a very difficult key and you actually can pick it and you actually can pick it when handcuffed. It needs just some time. The important thing is you see this, this lock, it can rotate. It rotates by 90 degrees to lock and by 90 more degrees to double lock. If you want to pick it, if, if, you, if you open it with the key, you would turn in the same direction more and more and it goes back up. Picking is much easier when you turn in the opposite direction. So you go from double lock to normal lock by picking it. Then you can't go any farther, but you can shim it. So to open these, you pick it once, 90 degrees opposite direction, and then you shim it and it's, you're out. This is a model from England, which is around for uh, quite some time. And they put a disc waiver cylinder in it. So you have the standard handcuff design with a standard handcuff keyhole, as you note on the picture. And additionally, there's a cylinder below the handcuff having the seven disc lock. You see the key, it's a normal, normal key like you have in cabinets or something. But seven discs is quite good. So to close them, you apply them normally and then turn the key to double lock them. To open them, so you have to pick the lock and then you would need a normal handcuff key. It could be on the wrong side as it's a hinged one, so just shim it afterwards. But picking the lock when handcuffed is really hard. I know people did it. I tried it once and almost succeeded. <laughs> I can pick it close, picking it open it on mine is more difficult. So they are quite good, but they are not very, used, very much used here in the US, so possibly no real issue. So let's come to real high-end locks. <laughs> I think many of uh, you here have uh, um, seen the medical talks we had already and actually a company added medical locks to handcuffs. So this is their advertisement. They added a kit which you add on a normal handcuff and it has a medical cylinder on, on top so it hides the keyhole with the medical cylinder. They made it for peerless but now it's also available for Smith & Wesson and so forth, the major brands they have this kit and they also sell it completely finished as a, as a high security cuff. For those interested in locks, besides the medical, uh, medical lock, they also added an Asa Desmo lock, which is a, a lock with three sliders on each side, so also quite, high, some, quite uh, some high security. And they are both very hard to pick cylinders, but we'll see later. This is a picture of both of them. One is, the, is a leg iron with a medical lock and the other one is, the, is a normal Smith & Wesson with Asa Desmo. So you see it's basically a very hard plastic part where the, where the lock is in. And this uh, lock operates a normal key which is inside the handcuff. So possibly if you would be able to break apart the plastic, which is very hard to do, I, you possibly can't do it without tools you actually would have a handcuff key, which also is nice. <laughs> but you don't have to do that. If the double lock is not set, the cylinder is irrelevant. So without the double lock, you just shim the cuffs as any other cuff. But I think officers know that and would double lock the cuffs. But the lock, as I said, is just on the key. The lock doesn't hold in any way the double lock. So might it be possible to get out using the mesh inertia of the double locking bar? It is. 
So even though there's a high security cylinder on this cuff, and it's one of the best cylinders available until yesterday, <laughs> you can get out without using the cylinder at all. So the cuff is applied, it is double locked, and all you have to do is hammer it very hard on some ground. The right direction for that is to use the moving bow to the up because the double lock comes from the... Well, okay, because the double lock go, uh, is set from there, so you hammer it in this direction and the double lock springs back out. This is the only thing I will try as a real demo here, so I have some, because of the time constraints, we'll see. I now double lock the cuff using a tool, so now it doesn't move anymore here, it's fixed. I'll have to do it off stage because I think it's too... I can, I can show this a few times later on uh, down there, so, but it's, it's really doable when you're cuffed with them. It just hurts a little bit, possibly puts some uh, t tissue under there or so, but it basically works when cuffed. But they also can be picked. <laughs> this is the Medico and the Asa, and someone yesterday picked the Medico, I don't know if he's here. Congratulations to that. <laughs> I picked the Asa one yesterday using the Hope pick set. So it's doable, but it's, if you're cuffed, it would be quite difficult. I would rather hammer on something instead of uh, picking it when cuffed. So what are the solutions to, to really cuff someone who can't escape? As said, the, the hinged version is already very good. If you take a hinged version which doesn't have the keyhole in the center but on the side, and it's applied in a way that the keyhole is back from the hand and is on the side with the thumb, so the keyhole would be here. <coughs> then it's really very hard to get out even if you have the key. With the, hand, with the pick set, forget it completely. If that's not enough, and possibly they know that it's not enough, they invented this item down there, which is a metal cover. It's placed over the cuff, and then it's topological, topologically attached to it with a chain. So they put this around your waist, put the chain to your back and attaches there. So the only lock is on your back and the handcuffs are in the front. And the lock of the handcuffs is completely hidden. If they're not double locked, you can shim them anyway. But if they're double locked, in this constellation you're pretty much lost. But f so possibly a more simple solution usually is better than the complex lock with a broken mechanism behind it. Okay, thanks for listening to this very short talk, but sorry we had these time constraints. And I hope some people come back afterwards to the, now to the, to the lockpicking area. And I'll try to take a few short questions if time allows. So, thanks for listening and... <laughs> Are there any questions? Yeah, we are not alive. Uh, very interesting presentation. You've got most of the handcuffs in uh, the, our collection, but I notice you do not have any, or may have you seen any of the uh, Chubb transport? There's been two versions of the Chubb uh, handcuffs out. I actually have both Chubb handcuffs with me, so feel free to come down to the, to the lockpicking area. Okay. There's a Chubb escort. This you can't pick. Not realistic when handcuffed. So that's the, ch uh, the chub escort. So that's a chub detainer, which has a standard chub lock in it with three levers. If you know what that is, it's right, a yeah, quite okay. a good lock. This I can pick, even when handcuffed. Okay, I'd like to see a demo of that. We'll see that. More questions? Okay, then thanks for everybody, and feel free to come down right now to the, to the second level. I'll bring all the cuffs and some tools, and we'll try some shimming and some picking.
coming up momentarily. We'll have Laszlo, your MC, turns into Super Laszlo.